Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Welcome back to my Create an RPG series. In this episode, we will be creating a simple placeholder uh, widget UI for our abilities, just so we have something so it's easy to see which abilities are available. It will also sort of help us a debug if we ever run into a problem along the way. So uh, let's go to our widgets folder and let's create two widgets. Let's create one called W underscore abilities as in plural. Then we create another one, which is W W underscore ability as in singular. And this will be similar to our functionality when it came to the status effects. We had one container and we had one ability or one singular, which contained the, essentially the functionality of um, uh, a single widget of status effect. So this will be a single instance of an ability. We'll remove the canvas panel of, we're inside the, the singular ability now and we'll change from fill on screen to the side on screen. So it takes up the space that we intend it to. In here, we can do something very similar to the status effect. We'll just do a size box. Uh, we can uh, overwrite it and put some numbers in here. Let's go with 64 or something like that. Um, inside of that, we can put in an overlay. So we have something to place multiple uh, elements into if we wanted to. Uh, we can put a vertical box just like we did with the stats effect. So we can have like a image and uh, some text underneath it. So let's actually do that. We'll get an image. Place it in the vertical box, we'll get a text, place it in the vertical box. And yeah, we'll make sure that the vertical box takes up. Actually, should we? Yeah, it'll be fine, I think. Uh, we can change the text to be something like, I don't know, if uh, or something so we can see sort of what kind of uh, space it takes up. We'll change it to fill. We'll change it to be centered in the middle. And we should probably, yeah, we can center it in the, both horizontal and vertical. We can change the size to 12 or something like that. That seems to fit nicely. Um, when it comes to the image, uh, we can make sure that it's centered horizontally so it takes up its dimensions uniformly. Um, in addition to this, I guess we can add another text. We can add it to the overlay and make sure that it's above the vertical box. Uh, we can say that this one should be, we, we can have this sort of as a placeholder, like key bind sort of thing. So we can say it should be in, in the right corner, uh, in the top, and uh, we can set a number here, maybe the number three or something. You can see that this is sort of big, so maybe we'll change this to 12 as well. And maybe this is fine. So now, now we have a group of elements here, essentially. We have an image. We can say that this is the ability icon as name. We have a text for the kick, which we can call the, uh, the ability itself or ability text. And make sure that it's uh, made into a variable. And we'll also want to do it for our other text, and we'll call this one sort of... Uh, we bind text or something of that nature. Make sure that it's a uh, variable as well. Mm -hmm. I got a few too many eyes there, I believe. Remove one, compile and save. And what we want to do now is essentially, we want to have some variables exposed so we can actually set these values. So we'll start off removing the tick, removing the pre-construct, just having the construct here. And we want to have our keybind text, for example, we want to set the text form. So we need a variable for that. So we'll promote this to variable. We'll call this one uh, hot key or something of that nature. Uh, we'll make sure to make it instance editable and expose on spawn so it can be sent in when we create it. After that, we want to take our ability text and we want to do the same thing here. We want to set the text like so. 
And once we have set the text, we can promote this to variable. We can call this one uh, ability name, maybe. Make sure that it is instance editable and exposed on spawn as well. And lastly, we have our ability icon. Drag that one out. And we want to set brush from texture. So, and then we can just promote this as well to a variable and we can drag that out here and name it something like icon texture or something of that nature, right? So now we have these things that are able to be uh, set when we, we create an icon essentially. And when do we do this? Well, we do this functionality in our widget, which is called abilities, which is the one that the container essentially. We'll start off here removing the canvas panel and the side on screen, just like we have in the past when it comes to the status effects. And uh, when it comes to the functionality or the, the elements in this one, we just want to have one horizontal bar in my case. And we want to name this uh, ability bar or something of that nature. Compile, save, actually make sure that it's a, it's a variable also so we have it available. Going into the graph now, we remove the tick, we remove the pre-construct. And now let's add some functionality here. So what we want to accomplish, and now my UI is being very problematic, but it's fine, we'll work through it. What we want to do here is we have created already functionality in our abilities, in our blueprint component, if you remember. Uh, if we go there, we have an event dispatcher called abilities available changed. And this one will be called every time we add an ability so far. So we get an update saying, oh, these are our abilities now. And we can make use of this in our abilities uh, bar essentially. So we can <coughs> get owning player pawn like so. And from that we can get the component by class. And the component that we want to get, of course, is the abilities because that is where we have our abilities and from this we can say if this is valid then we want to bind and what we want to bind is the abilities changed like so now the event here we can create <clears throat> just drag off like something over here, add an event, and we'll call this abilities change. It'll, it will be fine. So we can see that we get a, an array of abilities when we call upon this. Drag this up a little bit. And what we want to do here is we want to keep track of, we will be creating widgets that we will be having in our bar. And we want to keep track of those, so we will be creating um, references to those. Um, so the ability bar here, whenever we get an update, we want to make sure to clear out all the existing that we already have. So if we have already put things here earlier, we want to remove them so we can rebuild it essentially. Now this is not the optimal way to, to handle this. Uh, if you want to build upon the system, you probably want to make it a bit more surgical so that when you add an ability or remove an ability, you only handle that specific reference and uh, ability in your hotbar. But this saves us a bit of time so we can focus on a, more things essentially. So what we want to do here is essentially just say clear children, meaning that uh, whatever widgets we have in this bar, we're getting rid of them. In addition to that, we want to keep track of our references, right? So ability widgets we can call on uh, a variable and we can make this of the type and uh, w ability and the singular one and make sure that we have an array of this so we have multiples right now this means that this one needs to be cleared also so we'll get the reference to this one and we'll say clear this way we have started off with the functionality here of every time we get a, an update we make sure to clean up everything for us so we have the space to, to do uh, the things that we want to do now, which is 
we want to <coughs> do a reroute here. We'll do a loop. Reroute it a bit more. Now, what we want to do here is we want to create a widget uh, for each of these elements. So right click, create widget and make the type ability. So, which exposes all the different things that we have said uh, in the beginning or when we created the ability widget that we wanted to expose, right? Now, in our abilities here, we have a bunch of things. We have uh, ability name, I think. No, we don't. Okay. Uh, we have... Uh, actually, we might not have done any of those elements. Let's create some of those. Let's go to our base class or abilities. Mm -mm. Here, create some variables. Let's uh, create one that's called ability name. So this one will contain the name of the actual ability. That's pretty straightforward, right? Uh, let's make it of the type text, I believe. That should be good. And in addition to that, we may want to have our icon. So we should have a ability icon. So we on a, on a our ability basis can change that. So we'll call this a texture 2D. Object reference, like so. And we can also create a category for this thing, uh, UI or something like that. And make sure that the ability name is also in that. So we know that these are just UI elements and they don't serve a whole lot of other purpose for us in this case. Now, if we go back to our abilities, we should be able to break this out and get an ability name. There we go. We hook up the ability name to I call the authority by the panel. Apparently, let's change that. Uh, there we go. Rename this one to hot key bind. Compile, save, go back to our widget, and we want to refresh this one. There we go. So ability name goes in there. Um, did we not have a texture as well? We did not make this exponents on instance editable and expose on spawn. We need that as well, so we have it available here when we we do stuff. So we'll refresh this. So and we'll get the ability icon, I think we called it. We'll hook that one up as well. And lastly, we have the hotkey bind here, which we can just make it easy for us in this case and say. Uh, you might want to have like special logic for this as you allow keybinds to happen, but we will just keep this simple and take the, the index here and add one to it. Uh, so like the zeroth index will have a one next to it, the first index will have a two, etc. etc. It makes it easy to, to see uh, what keys they should sort of be, uh, even though we're not going to be using them like that right now. Uh, and then just hooking that up to our hotkey bind, it will convert it. Like so, and we are now creating our different uh, widgets like this. Compile and save for now. Now from here, we just need to add these different things. So we have our ability uh, reference widget uh, array. We'll just add the reference that we've just created now, the widget, like so. And then we also need to make sure that we're actually adding it to the ability bar also. So we'll just add here as well. Add child to horizontal box. Like so, and make sure that we're adding the same reference that we put in our array, like so. And the only thing that remains now is essentially putting it on our hood. So let's go to our widgets and our hood. We'll go to our user created we we'll get our abilities and we can place it. Let's place it above our uh, uh, help bar to make everything super condensed and very confusing to see. Uh, let's see, we anchor it in the bottom. We make sure that its alignment is 0 0.5 in X because we want to have it centered. And let's remove the position X. Actually, we may not want to... Ah, it's fine. And we'll size the content as well. So it should be good like that. 
Now, as this will just go to our ability, which we have currently added to our character, which is ability slash, we'll give it a name. So under UI, we should find it here. We can call this slash. And as an icon, we can pick something that we have so we know that it's uh, not the default. So I'll pick this UE4 logo and we'll just play. And you can see that we have an icon now that says slash and it has a one next to it. And that's our ability essentially. So this would be expanded as we put uh, more abilities into the bar. So if we go and uh, let's find our third person character and add starting abilities. Let's add a couple more and let's have them exactly the same because we don't, let's actually do this. We'll have one of well, the base one, which doesn't have a, name and the third one which will be slash and we'll just uh, see what that looks like and you can see uh, this is what it looks like so we don't have an icon for the second one and we don't have a name for it so it's blank as it's there as well but yeah so it would be building out like that depending on how many abilities you have essentially um i think that might be a good place to stop for now i hope to see you in the next episode Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.